Hello everyone, we're in another video here today with Amir as we are actually going to be covering a free Stratos on the Zaheer today. How are you doing today, Amir? Uh, doing pretty good. Watching free Stratos always makes my brain tingle. Getting to see the gliding while uh, hitting almost every ability this character can throw. Yeah, yeah it's always just so nice to see. For sure. I mean, Zaheer, definitely a difficult character to pilot, having a lot of... I'm pretty sure actually every ability on him is the skill shot. Very, very difficult to pilot, and Free Shadows makes it look so easy half the time with being able to just land all these abilities and be able to usually clutch out some very difficult matchups. Yeah, like, uh, watching Stratos is... Uh, it's like watching a, a professional basketball game, seeing everyone just, like hit every three-pointer and then i try and go for one myself and and i am throwing it in the opposite direction <laughs> i see stratos lock in zaheer hit every ability and then i long zaheer in myself and i'm wondering where my damage is coming from as i throw my w behind me oh no yeah i've never gone that direction with zaheer personally i've never actually tried zaheer yet myself but uh, i can definitely see that because i've i've had that experience with other characters I'm excited to see what what Free ends up doing uh, in this game with us today. Yeah, I think watching Free, at least recently, um, I've seen a lot of gameplay that usually players would say is like extremely risky. But I think seeing Free go for it so consistently, as we see, like, Free is just hitting almost every ability and we're just... We're going to ignore the blink that went maybe like a step forward. <laughs> That's the blink one, right? It just no movement. If he, had, if he had blink two there, I actually think he wins that fight, which is kind of crazy to think about because that gives him enough distance to basically gap close and be able to take it down. The other thing that's uh, kind of interesting and the main reason why uh, we're kind of taking a look at uh, Freeze Zaheer today is because Zaheer just got buffs. Now, Zaheer is already a pretty strong character, but getting this extra buff has just like kind of pushed them to the extra level and it's pretty incredible to see what could be done with now with a little bit of extra damage buffs given to him yeah so zaheer got i think it was the flat damage on w buff um and i know at the beginning of the patch free was testing a few things out um trying out maxing w last thinking that the bonus damage to it was just going to be enough to supplement not having to level it anymore but i'm pretty sure now we have seen free switch back to maxing w i think second uh, um right after q yeah well, I mean, we'll have to see right now it looks like he went uh q and passive passive is max and he's got his q yeah. so we'll have to see i think you're right i do level believe it's going to be the w should be the uh should be the decider but yeah other than that we got the new emerald tablet which i saw free trying out a bit during the beginning of the patch as well going nearly undefeated the first few games um but also i'm pretty sure we've seen a very drastic drop off of emerald tablet being built i think everyone just wanted to relive the good old days of emerald tablet um but sadly with it being a force court instead of the old mithril it has not seen enough play especially no. on a character like Zaheer. Yeah, I honestly, unfortunately, think Emerald Tablet is just not going to be seen for pretty much any character at this point. The cost is too much on a four score. I think if it was at Mithril, we might be able to see some play, but the amp is matching items that are way cheaper than it, and the 12 second cooldown on the movement speed boost is just not justifying the passive for the extra cost to get it. Yeah, maybe if it was like plus 50% movement speed, I'd build it on like Alonzo and make a very funny speed Alonzo. Also, we just see so much damage coming out from the Zaheer. Q into W and throwing the R right on top, forcing people to play away from us instead of right into us. And then, like, I don't know, I, I want to say that Stratos is, is like hitting every skill shot, but with the way that they play, it honestly looks like we're just mind controlling our opponents to walk into them. Well, exactly. I mean, the Alonzo went in for the engage and immediately free just sets up the AOE damage on top of the, the combo that Alonzo's going to set up, instantly just like shutting them down. Yeah, and then this is one of those risky plays that I was talking about earlier, where it looks like free just like to anyone else, it looks like we're just running it down and inting. But then 
We're maybe picking up a second kill. Are we one v threeing an entire team? This is this is free. This is what free does. It's like again, yeah. It's the questionable, you know, hyper aggressive, hyper forward uh, positioning that may look questionable. But the thing is, is that Free is confident in his mechanical skills, and it shows there. He knows how to pilot this character. He knows what other characters can do, and he can mechanically outplay them. So he doesn't have to play super safe when he knows he can just cancel, you know, the dashes from certain characters. He can keep himself safe from engages. Like he cancels the PLO with his knockup so that he's able to just take him down. And it allows Free to play in like what you mentioned, you know, some people might say, you know, is a more questionable forward position when he knows that he can just get away with it. Yeah, like against most players, I think that the um, the Shukai team should always just instantly wipe whoever TP's in there. But against Free, it's like there is always a chance that the fight just goes in in Free's favor. Actually, let's get back to free as he TP'd away. They're actually going into factory. Uh, just didn't want to, you know, keep us a cam of the of the corpse. <laughs> I think... What are we seeing come out here? A mithril? Sorry, uh, yeah, a mithril coming out for... What? What? Oh, we're slamming heal cut early, which I think does make sense. We, I'm assuming, don't have any heal cut, at least on hit heal cut from our team. We might have some from... Oh, we don't even have any sort of dwarf... Uh, sorry, reflection from our Alonzo. Which would explain probably why he went for the early heal cut this game. Yeah, and we're also seeing just... Like, Free sees someone slightly out of position or, like, slightly CC'd. Even if they're CC'd by their own abilities and instantly just throws seven abilities on top of them. Removing half their health as we're doing to the Aya as well. Yeah, like the Debbie Marlene overcommitted, and uh, as soon as they committed their their full engagement, Free just placed exactly where it would be and and took that fight. Yeah, I also love. Oh my God, we're blinking forward. We know, like, Free's read on fights is just so insane because we know that we have to make some sort of play there as our uh, our teammate has gone down and we're in a one v two and they have timer advantage. We, like we have to try and go for something. Free blinks forward with Aya just, I'm assuming, because I wasn't assuming, or I wasn't ready for it either. I assume the Aya wasn't ready for it. And if we hit one more ability there, I think we take her down and can possibly win the 1v1 that's remaining. Well, exactly. And, and going into that melee range, sure puts at the risk of, you know, obviously the Aya is able to put out damage and get the kill, but it also allows Free to guarantee the knockup and ideally have a higher probability of landing the other two point blank shots. Yeah, sadly, we were unable to pull that one out, but like just the ability to start looking for these plays and understanding the, the limits of your character is, I think, honestly, what makes Free so fun to watch. Oh, absolutely. I think this is also a very good standing point of this is a, a, a prime example of if you're very confident in what your character can do and you know your limitations and you know what enemy character limitations are, it can really show the things that you can do. Because I think that's really the prime example of what Free uh, shows us in his gameplay is that he's confident in his character. He's confident that he knows what other characters can do and he knows how he can outplay those those type of characters when he goes up in the 1v1 matchups. Yeah, and I wonder if we'll be taking this Mithril for any slot or if we're... It looks like we are giving it over to our Carla. I don't know what anyone is going to be building with these items, but... Yeah, free slamming the Scotty. I think it makes sense as it just makes it really easy to hit the rest of our abilities. And yeah, our Carla is going to be slamming racing helmet, which I, I, I mean, I'm still somewhat iffy on the Carla build. I know that it's been changing because of the, the new crit items, the change to crit items last season, the, like the change that she got on 1.0, changing how her W works. I don't know how the Carla build works anymore. I just see them building some new items every day, and I just go and look at what rank one Carla player is doing and then copy it. Yeah, it might not be fully defined yet. And one thing I really want to bring up about the arm piece on Zaheer, because I think I think Zaheer right now has one of the most flexible arm pieces in this game, is Scotty and how we talked about like the Emerald Tablet. 
th if you think about it here, Scotty has basically the same amp as the Emerald Tablet. It gives a slow every three seconds, which essentially is the whole same purpose of what you want to get from the movement speed from Emerald Tablet anyways, is to uh, chase or to kite backwards. But it's on a 12 second versus three second. And then on top of that there, you also can go with a different option, like maybe Nightmare Nails for basically the same amp again. But now with heel cut and cooldown reduction, so you can flex your arm piece. Yeah, and I think the bigger thing for me is that uh, getting a 20% bonus movement speed for yourself is a, le a bit less impactful than slowing someone for uh, for 20%, because a 20% slow means that your entire team is 20% faster than this person now. Well, theoretically. Um, the only thing it affects is if you're being chased in a 1v3 and you can't slow everyone on the enemy team. But also, oh, we're yeah. just seeing so much damage come out from free. Sadly, our Alonzo just got one shot. So, like, I, I don't understand it. I, like, if that's me, I'm on the floor to that Hyunwoo E. I, like, Free's understanding of the cooldowns of Hyunwoo and then just playing around it, blinking to the right. Like, it, it just, it all just lines up so perfectly so many times that you can't say that this is an accident anymore. Like, this is just Free doing what Free does. Well, ex exactly. And I mean, the thing is as well is <laughs> I'm looking at Freeze inventory right now and he's no food. It's kind of kind of stressing me out because, you know, we've got a cheat work inventory going on. No food. No. Well, we got two waters. We're also not cr slamming our holy orders. Which... There we go. Uh, We're okay. waiting on it. Surely Lol King will share some of his delicious food that he is that he's cooked. Oh, we loot the the yawn and we only take his water i assume yawn didn't have any food either yep okay there we're grabbing some meat hopefully going to cook it up and have some steak for the future fights but yeah it's uh it's it's just it's yeah it's it's really crazy to kind of just see this kind of gameplay and it's it's at this kind of level that you start noticing this a lot more I mean, we've covered a couple other characters that do very similar things where they'll They'll play in a lot more forward and aggressive position because they know the limitations of their characters and are able to make these riskier plays with high rewards. Versus yeah, playing just, a bit safer. I think when watching a character like Zaheer, when everything is a skill shot, it just feels different. Um, like, even though, um, also we're seeing Free Stratos go around. I'm assuming because we don't think we can actually catch if we go the same way. We're going for the TP into Temple to try and get the cutoff. Hopefully, we do get the top spawn. Yeah, really, really and good I... play. I, I like I like that angle because yeah, I don't think Z here ever catches up from that distance, and this guaranteed immediately forcing Pymaster to have to go backwards and run right into his team. Yeah, I think that Pymaster had noticed the pings right in front and realize that we can't really keep going forward so we just have to try and make something happen while i think we carla and alonzo had split up for a bit try and make sure that um our adriana wasn't able to get out from either side yeah they definitely took every angle possible to make sure that that happened we'll have to see where the rest of the the build goes here i'm pretty sure it's just chaser on the on the weapon and then i'm not sure what the headpiece is for this because it's going to be a not usually should be no cooldown right because he's got no it will be a cooldown piece yeah we should be getting a cdr piece in our headpiece and it i'm assuming dragon's fury yeah we're gonna yeah. see the dragon's fury this is an item that works really well with anyone that is actually good at zaheer because you shoot out a lot of abilities and if you're just death shredding them, especially for your entire team, if you're not playing solo DPS to here, even if you are, defense shredding them for yourself is really nice as well. Um, but in this comp, we're going to see Alonzo probably lock someone down. Stratos is going to throw so many abilities at them, and then they're going to have no defense. Carla can throw a few abilities in as well. They should be dead. For sure. Now, I, it's hard for me to talk about this item, specifically like Dragon's Fury on a character like to here. Because there's a lot of characters that if it if they end up catching, it's not going to matter. It's really, the item is actually just going to do no value in the sense that they're guaranteed just going to die. But if they catch a character like Zhukai, 
or like Echion, maybe like a Dema in this game, right? Maybe the Yawn. I think it is going to have insane value because it's going to just start shredding them and making that value on their HP go down more and more and more until eventually they just completely shred. Yeah, I think the funniest character to see uh, the Dragon's Fury against is Magnus because you get to see him go from 300 defense, which is somewhat unrealistic, to just around like 100. <laughs> Yeah, and that's a prime example of just what happened there. Both the front lines turned into paper with Free just being able to hit them, setting them up, letting him and Carla just completely nuke them out. And at that point, it doesn't matter what Isol does. Isol just had to run for his life and couldn't get away. Yeah, I also really like the fact that in a lot of these fights, we're waiting for our Alonzo to be able to deny someone the ability to move. And then we're looking to just make sure that we're landing everything we can off of that. Like, we're waiting for the Alonzo point, uh, and then we're, like, off the Alonzo point, we're confirming three or four abilities, getting so much damage in, um, and then basically killing someone off of a single ability that a lot of people can't actually dodge. And I assume we will be taking the blood. Yeah, it should ourselves. absolutely be Chaser there. And yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, Freeze playing incredibly well around his, uh, his front line. Because he knows as soon as that they can't move, he just full sends his main combo point pieces and it will shred any target that Alonzo was determined should be uh, taken down. So I assume, yeah, there we go. I thought it was because we're just in combat, we can't equip the chaser yet. But I also don't know if Free actually upgrades chaser as I don't remember what the uh, blood... Well, the Dawn Shard version gives? Yeah, Dawn Shard would be your Hex. Uh, I mean, Hex seems like it would be solid, but he might be just valuing that extra pen. Yeah, I think because we're already killing people off nearly one combo, um, usually overkilling someone off a combo, we're not looking to get the Hex damage value. Also, we're just seeing Free's ability to just start the fight, like playing up, and then making sure that we're never in the actual threat range actually maybe i lie as we go down here okay but one thing really to look at there i mean he took he hit debbie and marlene with four abilities and they were immediately almost dead and out of the fight and the other thing to really take a look at during that play specifically is you saw um the alonzo point at the aya and free without hesitation sent his full combo at where the aya would have been rooted now aya ended up actually like dashing out of the point so the point never landed but if the if it did that's where she would have been and would have been instantly obliterated and it kind of just shows that that's exactly it like free will full on just send it to a target with the full face that that's where they're going to be and just take them out yeah and i love this trust in our teammates i think in solo queue it's hard to to trust our teammates this much but being able to just say hey my my alonzo is going to point here going to hit this person and I believe in, I believe in the team. I believe this play works, and they, you just commit to it. Also, we're gonna see the Blood Ripper come out. Yeah, which makes I'm, a lot of sense, right? Because we have our twelve percent now, plus also twenty percent, and then we're just percent or shredding them in, on top of that. Yeah, uh, there should be no tank in the game that ever lives against us. But it does look like we, oh no, we won't be in a one v three. Because we do have the uh, the new battles, or I guess final zone system, where this team should revive. Which I still think is probably one of the best changes that we have seen to this game in a while. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it goes from this situation being like that Echion saying, Hey, this game's over, GG, we got second, to, okay, wait, if I can just like outsmart, giga place myself so I'm in the right spot... We have a chance to win this. We can we can take this fight again. Now, the only scary thing is... Okay, I was wondering if Stratos was going to jump over and try and get into Pond... Or sorry, get into a stream before it actually goes red and then just TP over to Cemetery if, uh, if they want to follow. Maybe they will. Yeah, I think we're maybe they were... Stratos I think I think that what they were trying to do is uh, make make the Echion maybe feel safe that they weren't going to cross over into the other zone. 
But, I mean, Ekion's ready to TP, so we'll have to see what happens here. I, funny enough, in Hindsley, obviously they don't have this information, but if they just stayed on the edge there, the zone would lock up and he would actually be forced to fight them. But I think they'd all head boom, which is even funnier. Yeah, I am... Okay, I... I honestly thought that they were going to contest it because if they contest it, they still force Ekion to go cemetery. But the safe and smart plan will always just control this final zone, make sure that you have complete control. Any enemy walking into you from this bridge side on the right will... They will just instantly fall over. Because Zaheer just comboing in a straight line is is honestly one of the most fun things you get to do. You just get to press every button and keep pressing them. Yeah, and I, I think, yeah, I think technically uh, a lot of people would look at the strategy of trying to find the rat and forcing them to, to die in the 1v3. But we have four blood items on this team. I think this team's pretty much just ultimately confident that it doesn't matter. They'll just take a clean fight. They don't risk it. And they'll be able to actually just win off this. No, I don't know if we see the Zaheer or the, sorry, Ekion jumping over from the other side. But the second we see him, we're just playing so far back, playing out of the range, using any movement speed bonus we get from our abilities to keep kiting. And we went from being basically the front line of the fight to instantly the back line and then running right back up. Yeah, plus also, I mean, we instantly canceled Gummy's engage with the, with the dash with the knockup, and then the fall of the Lonzo just completely denied Gummy from being able to get into the fight there as Ekion. Yeah, and then we're also seeing just the amount of defense that Gummy's losing because Stratos is able to hit all of these abilities. The pulverization is just so massive, and then now it looks like we're playing with our food just a bit, having some fun. <laughs> yeah, this is the... <laughs> Kind of, kind of the, the vibe I was getting there, but it yeah. is really, really incredible. To, one thing to really take from Free's gameplay style, especially on Zaheer, is watch his matchup fights. If you're looking to find like what to do with this kind of character, watch how he takes his one v ones and see how he cancels and denies so much of the opponent's ability to try and get onto him and allow him to be able to nuke it. And everyone, that will be it for today. We'll see you in the next one.